Welcome to 2A Cops. My name is Keith. In this episode, we're going to talk about what cops really think about the Second Amendment. Now, I did this video because I kept hearing from people in the 2A community that they were afraid that their local police were going to take their guns and confiscate them in, in some mass government confiscation. If the president came down and said, seize all guns, that the cops would just march out and go do that. And I knew the truth because I work with cops every day. I train cops from coast to coast every single week. And I get a chance to talk to cops from all varieties of life in different states. And I knew how they felt and I knew what they were going to do. Uh, also, I worked in the most communist county in America. I worked in the San Francisco Bay Area. My jury pool was Oakland and Berkeley. It doesn't get much more communist and socialist than that. And I know that in my very liberal area, the cops were actually very conservative and had no plans on partaking in any mass government confiscation. So we're going to do future videos and some other things about why a cop might take your gun, what mass gun confiscation would actually look like uh, by looking at like the real numbers of how many cops we have and all that kind of stuff. Before we get going and we start breaking down what cops said, hit that like button, hit subscribe, hit follow. 75% of the people that watch our videos, they'll watch it all the time, but they don't follow us. We need you to do that because it helps us get our word out. It lets YouTube know that what we have to say, other people want to hear it as well. So every like, comment, and follow helps us out. All right, let's break down the numbers, my friends. Well, how, let me talk about the structure of this. What I did was there was a, a, a group of cops online that the group was about i want to say there's 50,000 cops in this group they are all vetted they all have to show their id to get into this group so in this group we put up a poll and we asked several questions i left the poll up for a week i liked this particular group because looking at the conversations in there it was people from all different parts of the country there were federal agents there were police officers there were deputy sheriffs there were uh, state troopers there were alcohol beverage control agents there, were, which is a state alcohol beverage control. They don't do firearms. I'm not like ATF. Uh, it seems like ATF only does firearms and they're not working on the other things they're supposed to work on, but I digress. All right. Uh, please don't shoot my dog. All right. So we asked a variety of questions and then we had them answer. There were, I want to say just shy of 10,000 answers in the week that I had the poll up and uh, yeah, it was interesting. All right. So the first question I asked was, do you support the Second Amendment, the right to keep and bear arms? Now, overwhelmingly, the answer was yes. 100% of the officers said that they support the Second Amendment. Now, that bears repeating. Every single officer supported the Second Amendment. There was not one single officer who said that they don't support it. Now, not only did they support it, but we let them have a chance to leave some comments. And some of the comments were stuff that would make you feel good. Right? There were no negative comments. It was, the meaning of the Second Amendment is clear, and the Constitution was designed to protect natural rights. Another officer wrote in, our founding fathers saw the oppression of government power, and now more than ever, we need more support to keep the leftist government officials wanting to take everyone's guns. Another officer wrote in, I believe every law-abiding citizen should be able to carry a firearm to be able to come to my defense if I need it. I love that one. Another, la another one that I want to point out that was really cool was you swear that to defend it, you should support it. Now, I could list more, but they are all like, I just cherry picked some ones, but they were all similar to this. 100% yes. All right. So do you think there needs to be more gun control legislation? Now, 86% of the officers responded that there does not need to be any more gun control legislation. Now, we don't want more because the legislation being put out is contrary to the Constitution. It doesn't really help the public. Now, a great example is California's requirement to pass a background check and to buy ammunition. Now, officers know that this isn't keeping the community safe. The crime statistics show it. Now, additionally, one out of four people are failing the background check, including police officers. So why are they failing? Because the system's broken and it's keeping law-abiding citizens from purchasing ammo. Now, this is just a backdoor way of subverting your rights. Now let's talk about the other 14%. Now 8% of officers said that there does need to be more legislation with an additional 5% saying they're neutral on the subject. Now before everyone freaks out that the cops are gonna go seize your guns, let's think about it a little bit more. If there's 100 police officers ordered to seize guns under a new gun control measure, 86 of them are gonna disagree with it. Only eight of them are gonna agree with it. So how far do you think those eight people are really gonna go 
if 86 are against it. Now, peer pressure is a real thing, especially uh, in a law enforcement agency. Uh, I can really equate it to, it's like being in the military. If you're out of line, people are going to put you back in line. Now, here's a sampling of what officers said about this particular poll. Now, control in the sense of stricter penalties for felons going armed and gang enhancements for those that are affiliated going armed during dangerous felonies. Now, I'm not defending this. I'm just putting in a perspective of some cops. Now, there's a lot of people say, even if you're a felon, you should be able to have a gun. I agree with that. I do. But the problem is there are some cops that work in states like California where it's very hard to get convicted of a felony. And if you do, you're a really bad person. It's not like some other states that really like they convict everybody for everything. And some of those felonies, like bad felonies, you're in prison for a long time and don't come out. Uh, you know, there's felonies for like theft that you come out uh, fairly quickly. In California, you won't get a felony for theft. It's just not going to happen. So in certain states, cops only see bad felonies, meaning violent crimes, pedophiles, gang members, drug dealers, stuff like that. So I think that's where they're coming for. But I'm I'm not positive about that, but I'm just putting things in perspective for you. But hash it out in the comments. I know you guys are. All right. So another comment was required to report lost or stolen, meaning that this officer is just saying that if you have a lost or stolen gun, you should report it. And that's because he's probably finding guns on the street that were not reported stolen that should have been. Another one was individual mental illness and violent non-felony history should be identified as and restricted. Another person said the right kind need to go after mental health and criminals. So there's kind of a, a long theme here where the cops want to go after violent criminals and people with mental, mental illness. And you can't blame them because they're dealing with it every day. They're not like normal people that go about their normal day you know, they're, they're seeing this every day and they're, and they're worried about their communities. Another person says it depends on the legislation. I believe banning high capacity magazines and waiting periods are ineffective, but support better background checks for all transactions. There is no easy black and white answer on this. And a, another person wrote, make gun show sales consistent with regular gun sales, come up with a means of identifying mentally ill to help restrict them from attaining firearms. Okay. So as you can see, most of the officers are concerned about people with mental health issues or a violent criminal history. So their concerns understandable since they're tasked with protecting our communities. No one said we need to go out and start confiscating guns. Our poll shows this as does others. So do you think, the next question we asked them was, do you think any of these gun control laws are unconstitutional? Now, most officers felt felons in possession of a firearm were inappropriate. Only 10% felt that felons should have guns. However, a full 42% felt that the National Firearms Act was unconstitutional and 78% felt that the prohibition of assault weapons were unconstitutional. Almost 60% disagreed with red flag laws. So what did the officer have to say? You know, here, here's a sampling of some of the, their responses here. So one officer said, I was shot in the line of duty. I don't blame the firearm, but convicted felon who shot me. Oh, wait, according to law, he shouldn't have had it. Shake my damn head. All right, so this officer got shot by a felon, and he's holding the felon responsible. Okay. States can't be trusted to work in the best interests of their citizens. California, New York, New Jersey, Illinois are glaring examples of what happens when you elect those that don't act in your best interests. Now, another officer said criminals equals crime. Let's keep them locked up, at least the dangerous ones. They're dangerous with or without guns. Then we don't need gun control laws. That's uh, that criminals go it, that criminals ignore anyway. So another officer wrote an armed society is a polite society. I'd agree with that. All right. So really their main issue is they don't want felons to have guns. Again, I know a lot of you feel that felons should have guns. I myself feel that most felons should have guns. I think what these officers are thinking of is they're thinking of these violent felons, the pedophiles, the drug dealers, the gang members, the people shooting other people, stuff like, but hash it out. <laughs> Let me know in there. So one other thing that we did, we did follow up or we did this, we kind of, we put out the results and a lot of people asked something that I thought was common sense. And people were saying, are they going to come take my semi-automatic firearm? And to be honest, I didn't put it in there because I thought the other questions covered it. So we did another poll and we just asked, basically, will you participate in mass gun confiscation? Now I went back to that same group and I had about the same number of people respond. And the first question was simple enough. If the Biden administration is able to pass a law to confiscate semi-automatic firearms like AR-15s and AKs, will you take part in seizing those guns under the new law? Of all of the participants, all but one person said they would not participate in confiscation of these guns. One person. 
So out of the thousands of people that responded to us, one person said they would. Now, I personally think that person was probably punking the system because that's what cops do is they like, they like just to, there's always that one guy that will always vote arbitrary. But let's say he is really going to follow through with that order. He's by himself. Do you think the other hundred cops are going to let him go do that? Man, it don't work that way. Okay. Now, any cop people are going to latch onto that one person and say that they're going to confiscate guns and say that is one too many. And I, I actually agree with you. It is one too many. However, law enforcement's not immune for peer pressure. Okay. So how far will one person go trying to participate in gun confiscation? Not very far, to be honest. We're going to kick their rear end. So here are some of the responses that I got back though. So I will not enforce any blatant unconstitutional law or decree. Hell no. No, just no, but no, shall not be infringed. I took an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States, not prevent it. Most of our rights and liberties are based upon conduct. Actions are more appropriately regulated with meaningful consequences rather than objects. This is especially true when those objects are arbitrarily identified by more cosmetic traits and perception. This isn't even something I would consider. It is the anti or antithesis of the very oath I took. As that would be a federal law, I would not enforce it. If it became state law, I would see it as unconstitutional and also not enforce it. So because the Second Amendment was written so that citizens have the same access to small arms that the government has, I carry an AR-15 on duty and protect my home with one. I would expect nothing less of our citizenry. Now, the next, next and last question, the last question was about registration and then confiscation. So I simply asked them, if the Biden administration requires owners of semi-automatic firearms like AR-15s to be registered, would you seize an unregistered firearm you came across in the street and arrest the owner? For this question, 5% said that they would seize unregistered firearms. 5% is not enough to carry out confiscation. Okay, We'll cover that impossibility in another article later on. With that said, these cops are looking at it in a more analytical light than in, than in the average person. Here, they're thinking about the gun being used in a crime or some other event, which is outlined in their comments. So one of the comments made for confiscation was the answer is actually maybe, depending on the circumstances, who I'm dealing with and why I'm dealing with them. Here, this is an officer that's thinking about public safety. His view is that he would do it if it were a gang member, drug dealer, domestic violence or some other issue where he feels the perpetrator will do harm with it to the general public. Now, the only other comment for seizing post-registration said, if the registering is deemed constitutional, then I would have to follow the law by oath. Registering is not prohibited ownership, it just sucks. Now, as for the other 95% of the officers said that they would not take the firearm, 95%, okay? Here's a sampling of their thoughts. Same as above, if our policy states you shall, then I will have to find another line of work. And to be honest, we don't want this guy to quit because if he quits, then somebody's going to take his place that will do it. And we have to remember that. I support the right to keep and bear arms. I also support a personal right to, to defense of oneself and others. The government can't and won't protect everybody. I'd give them a warning to register like I do with unregistered autos. Good for you, officer. Truthfully, it would depend. If the firearm was already being used in a legitimate crime against a person, then I'd already be seizing the weapon and suspect. Absent that, how would I even know? I'm not going to look into the registration status of a weapon and its owner otherwise. Another person said a well-regulated militia being necessary for the security of a free state, the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. I think we've all heard that somewhere. I will only seize firearms reported to be stolen or if the subject possessing the firearm has been disqualified from doing so through due process. Aside from registry being unconstitutional, there's no way our dumb government could effectively establish and run one. They can't even incarcerate people for the current laws on the books. The goal of a registry is to make ownership so frivolous, citizens won't own guns legally. No. If you don't have to show ID to vote, you don't need to register your firearms. All right. So look, I wanted to show the good, the bad, and the ugly. Okay. I keep hearing from people that cops are going to take all my guns. And I, I want to do a poll. It's not scientific. But man, I did ask a boatload of cops. And you got to respect that. What they would do. It was all anonymous for them. We know that they were cops and they worked all over the country and they worked urban and rural, federal. They, they represented us as a profession. And you got to respect that people were able to tell the truth. And I know in the comments, there are going to be people that are going to say, well, that 5% is going to, you know, whatever. You got to kick somebody's ass at that 5%. You think we're not doing that already? You know, you can't watch what the news says and take that as holy gospel because the news is not on anybody's side. They're actually against America. But I wanted to show it to you 
the good, the bad, the ugly, let you see it, hash it out in the comments. Don't forget, hit like, hit subscribe, hit follow. Let us know. Give us some love, man. Just let the algorithm know we're important. Hit that subscribe button. You've been watching us anyways. Why haven't you just hit subscribe? All right, guys, that's it. Just remember your ABCs. Always be caring.